right, so last time we had some problems with the body and subsequently after talking with the designer of this tool, I also discovered that the shaft was a little bit out given the way I had it set up in the, in the lathe. As we can see here, we are about 3,000 out on the mill head. So I'm going to move it down to the lathe spindle and see how we're turning there. So this collet holder that I'm using here is the one that I will be using with this tool. So if it's spinning straight, I'm confident that I'm going to get as accurately as I can with this machine. So you see we're getting about two thousandths out of the lathe spindle. The lathe spindle is a lot more accurate than the, than the um, milling spindle, so I expect it to be a little bit better. I'm going to hold the other end of it with the live center and we're just going to cut it in the collet. So when I put it in that collet, I know that somewhere mounted in that collet, this thing is going to be as accurate as I can get it. So we're going to start making the body again, and I'm going to do this very quickly because I've basically already showed this process. Um, the big difference here is the way I'm going to hold it. So you see I cut down what will be the register for the uh, thrust washer. All that is is a locator for the thrust washer. It, it, it doesn't have any other purpose. So as long as it's roughly where it needs to be we're fine and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut everything else that's important holding it by the by the extended part of that register
Okay, so what we've done here is take the important cuts in one turning. This is not moved. So I've got the bearing pocket, the shaft pocket, and by the way, this is pistoning now. It's tight enough to where it's actually push. It won't let me push it in all the way because of the air. So that's close enough. We can then hand finish that. And it's pistoning because I haven't cut the other side off yet. The reference face. All those were done in this turning. I can actually go ahead and cut the outer face with it sitting just like this. And then all I got to do is flip it and flip it, hold it, and turn the and cut off the excess. Alright, so I just kind of lightly press this bearing on there. Not all the way. So a couple things. One, I got there. But sometimes you have to work with what you got. And um, what I have is... Uh, a little bit limited on tooling and um, limited in stiffness of the machine. If I were to do this again, first off, I'd put the shaft between centers and turn it that way. And the only reason I didn't go ahead and do that now is because I was very close. You know, I was within two or three thousandths. So putting it in the collet chuck, which is the same collet chuck that I'm going to be using this tool with. Um, I think that's got me there. The whole thing about this is if I can get this within a thousandths with my machine, that's pretty incredible in my estimation. Well, it's not incredible. With my machine, that's um, more than satisfactory. I, you know, you're you're talking about uh, you're talking about limited rigidity, and I'm not making excuses for the machine. There is my own um, my own mess ups in here, but we're good. We got nice tight tolerances all around. I've checked it again. It's just as accurate as when I turned the shaft. You saw how I did the the facings on here on this on the body piece, the face, the bearing pocket and the hole were all done with it chucked one time. So and I checked in between each one of them to make sure the part had not moved. That's another thing I didn't mention, or didn't show that, but I did check in between each time to make sure the part did not move. That made all the difference in getting this part to line up properly, and getting this part to line up properly. You'll also notice I put some grooves in here. This is for the glue when the, when the uh, thrust washer attaches. That's just to give the glue a little bit of spreading room, so it's not, you know, so it's, it evens out all the way across the face. So there we are guys, we're um, basically at the same place we were in the last video, but uh, much happier than we were at this point in the last video, because all the parts fit the way they're supposed to, and the tolerances are probably a little bit better than the last part. We also are at the correct dimensions as per the instructions. I was a little over in the last one when went ahead and went with it. And I think I said before that you know this this sort of tool tool is is really pushing the limits of this of my machine. It's 
meant to do axle spacers and washers and an occasional screw that I can use a die on. It's not meant to make tooling, but it's doing a fairly decent job of it. In fact, it's doing a better job of it than I'm doing. So I'm going to leave it there, and the next one, uh, we'll get the indicator mount started. Alright guys, thanks for watching.